Oh, wow. What a crazy 24 hour it has been. This reminds me of how Toronto used to be when I was a kid. I remember shoveling for hours and hours after a snowstorm. So here we are the day after. How are your backs and legs sore? My back is pretty sore from all the shoveling. And what you saw earlier is what's left over of our snow blower. It had served us for three winters and yesterday's big dumping, but it was too much to ask of it. It went kind of kaput when I was helping my neighbor shovel. So here we are, uh, I guess back to the old fashioned way with shovels. So today we're gonna to take a little bit of a break from Genesis as we have our guest teacher today, the very charismatic Tony Evans. He gives us a message as we enter into this new year and I'll introduce him a little bit more later. So our world, we are going through a storm, a very, very difficult one. And it's been a very long extended storm. And we are now entering into our second year of that, of it. And our lives have been literally turned upside down and inside out. We've had so many casualties, loss of loved ones, loss of jobs and opportunities and health. But it's by the grace of God that we are getting through this one day at a time, but it really has taken a toll. We're all tired, we're worn out, it's been stressful, and it's been taxing both mentally and spiritually. And the thing about a storm, any storm, is its unpredictability. We can speculate, we can calculate, we can estimate, but at best, they are guesses. And in the end, it's unpredictable. So our medical technology and our vaccines, they have been literally life savers. And thank goodness for them because they have brought us a long way, but it has not been a solution. They have given us a critical life vest to help keep us afloat, but we still have a ways to go. And we all are doing the best that we can, but we're still left waiting and wondering, what is God up to? Why is he taking so long and how come we're still here? When will this finally come to an end? These are all good questions and questions that I have. And these are questions that Jesus' disciples asked when they were stuck in their storm. So in today's very familiar story, we have Jesus with his disciples in a storm. And Dr. Evans reminds us that even when we are in the will of God, we will be in storms. So God has not forgotten about us, nor has he abandoned us. He is calling our attention and wanting us to trust him. And Dr. Tony Evans is a passionate preacher who really brings alive the word of God. And he's the pastor of Oak Cliff Fellowship in Dallas. And he started his church about 40 years ago in his home. And today his broadcast touches millions of people. So he has a very short message for us, but a very timely one. His message is trusting Jesus in the storm. Trusting Jesus in the storm. And he gives us some very important insights while we are in the middle of this struggle. So let's listen to his teaching and I'll join you over in our breakout rooms. May God bless you this week. Amen. Amen. I want to challenge all of you to read the well-known story in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. It talks about a storm, and we are in a storm, aren't we? Uh, we're in a virus that's a storm. It keeps changing. The weather keeps getting worse in this storm, and that affects economies and, and <laughs> how things, supply chains, and uh, all manner of things. Some of the frustration about schools opening and closing. I mean, we're in a, well, we're in a bad storm. Well, the disciples were in a storm in uh, Mark chapter 4. But they were in a storm while simultaneously being in the will of God. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. They were crossing the Sea of Galilee and they were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. And they still ran in to a storm. Just because you're in the will of God doesn't mean you don't have bad negative circumstances. I'd love to tell you, follow Jesus and that won't. You know, you won't have a storm, but you know, they were in a storm while in the will of God. Well, we're getting ready to cross over. We're getting ready to cross over to a new year, and we're crossing over in a new year in a storm. And when the storm began to rage, 
there was not only the external storm that was the, the wind called the lilac in scripture that was tossing the boats, causing these professional, professional fishermen to be scared to death. But then there was an emotional storm. They, they were, it says they were afraid. And this is scary right now. I know in our humanity, you know, I know we, blood, we believe God, we trust in his word, but we can still get scared. You know, we can get a little terrified when things hit us and we hear about tragedies and we hear about people getting sick and loss of life and people being laid off who, who didn't get vaccinated and the government just trying to find the answers to this thing. I mean, it's scary, okay? Or it can be scary. So there was an emotional storm. But you know the worst kind of storm in this passage there was? A spiritual storm. It said they went over to Jesus, they woke him up, and said, do you not care? And when you're in a storm, yeah, if you would be honest, sometimes it feels like God doesn't care. Because if he cared, why would he allow me to go through this when I'm doing what he told me to do, which was get in the boat and go to the other side? So they're, they're going through it. You're going through it. I'm going through it. We're going through it. We're in a storm. Well, it says Jesus was asleep on a pillow. Mm. It says a cushion. That's a, that's a pillow, okay? <laughs> uh, that meant that he meant to go to sleep. Whenever you're sleeping on a pillow and you didn't tuck that thing under your head, <laughs> that means you're not sleeping by chance. You're sleeping by purpose. He went to sleep on purpose. And I know sometimes it feels, you know, and I know the feeling that you dial in heaven and the line is busy. <laughs> it looks like, feels like God is going on a vacation and has left us to fend for ourselves. Finally, we look like we were, things were getting better and here we go, another variant, you know? Uh, and it looks like God is asleep. Well, they, they aroused him, it said, and said, don't you care? Don't you see our fear, our pain? Don't you see the, 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 the struggle we're facing right now, and you, you say nothing. In fact, you're snoring. You're asleep. We're bailing out water. Then Jesus said, um, uh, why are you so timid? When they woke him up from his sleep, why are you so timid? That's almost like asking a swimmer who gets out the water, why are you so wet? I mean, you know, isn't it obvious, Jesus, given what we're going through? We're trying to cross over, and we're in trouble. We're trying to cross over from 21 to 22, yeah, and we are in trouble, okay? Then Jesus Christ looked at nature and said, peace be still. Jesus Christ looked at nature, looked at the circumstances, and said, peace be still. Well, now, if he says, peace be still, that must mean peace was moving, because he told peace to be still. When you are in the will of God, you're in the safest place to be even when you're in the midst of a storm. If they would have really remembered what Jesus said, what did he say? He said, let us go to the other side. He didn't say, let us go halfway and drown. He said, gentlemen, we're going to make it, but we're going to have some trials as we try to make it. And I'm going to sleep. I suggest you get your pillow and go to sleep with me. In other words, he calls them timid because they forgot his word because of how big the circumstances were. I am not undermining the circumstances, family, friends. I'm not saying this isn't serious. I'm not saying we shouldn't be cautious. I'm not saying we shouldn't be deliberate in what we do and the decisions we make. I am saying if you are living your life in the will of God, and if we are living our lives in the will of God, then this is the opportunity to see God at a whole nother level. This storm we are in, not only the medical one, but anyone that's affecting you right now, is an opportunity to see the God of nature, because nature is going crazy right now, just like that storm was in Mark 4, to see God rule and overrule our circumstances and meet us in the midst of it. Now, Jesus is laying on the boat. He's getting wet, you know. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's a bad weather situation, but he's still in charge. He's in charge of COVID. He is in charge. And so since he is in charge, we better get his undivided attention. And I've shared with you before, this is what COVID is all about. It's not just about a virus. It's about God getting our undivided attention on every level. Doctors haven't been able to fix it. Government officials haven't been able to fix it. 
uh, uh, you know, the Center for Disease Control hadn't been able to fix it. That's because God is talking and he is screaming. He's saying, folks, you better give me your undivided attention, okay? The passage concludes with this phrase. It says, they were very much afraid when they said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Ooh, now they were afraid of the storm, but they were super afraid of who Jesus was. You know, sometimes we're, we're, we're afraid of the wrong thing. We should be fearing God more than fearing circumstances. But the circumstances feel so near us and we're affected physically or circumstantially by it. That is, it's easy to stop fearing God and start fearing stuff. Well, I'm going to ask you to join me and I'm going to join you and we're going to fear God together. Yes, we're going to be wise with circumstances, but we're going to believe that if we fear God, who controls nature, which means he controls viruses, that he can speak the word poof, and he can change the trajectory of the situation. You know our problem? We're either not in God's will or we're not approaching our storms the right way. Let's get in God's will, which means we hear his word and obey his word. He said, let us go to the other side. So guess what? We're going to cross over 21. We're going to cross into 22 and we're going to do it in a storm. But guess what? We're going to get, I'm going to get my pillow. I'm going to get my, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my cushion. You get your cushion and you lay back and you talk to God as you get ready to cross over and you say, God, I know it's uncertainty, but you're my covering. You're my protector. You know, I'm going to wear my mask when I'm supposed to, but I'm, my, my eyes are going to be on you. I'm going to trust you during this storm. I'm going to trust you during this financial crisis. I'm going to trust you during this uh, relational, whatever that storm is, I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to rest in your truth. This is why you need to listen to the word of God, hear the word of God, We're going to, and, and respond to the word of God. And not be so timid. Yes, we have to be human to a point, but not to a fault because God is in the equation. So we're to trust God now as we cross over in this storm. We're to believe that God has a will. He has a plan. And if he let it rain, if he let it, if he let the virus mutate, then he's up to something bigger than what we see right now. And he's up to something. And he's up to something worldwide. If, if there's any reason to believe God's word, it's now. Because the Bible says in the end times, the enemy's going to have a worldwide plan. Well, God's letting us know he can control a worldwide plan. So we better talk to a worldwide God. So I want you to get close to God this New Year's Eve. Talk to family and friends. Pray together. Pray for one another as you cross over. Pray for the storms that want you or, and, and another a fellow saint happens to be going through, a fellow family member, talk to each other, encourage one another. Yeah, I know the boat looks like it's filling up, doesn't it? Looks like you're going to drown. Ah, you're not going to drown. Not if you're in the will of God. He's going to take it to the other side. Whatever that means in your life or whatever it means for us crossing over the calendar, um, we're going to make it through this storm. Either Christ is going to come back and take us up out of here <laughs> or he's going to show us his will taking us through here as we cross this wilderness into the place of blessing. Either way, we've gotten through the storm. Love you, and I'm going to believe God with you to take you to victory, and whatever that means as you cross over. A little boy was on a plane with his uh, uh, grandmother, and they hit some turbulence. They hit storm in the sky, and it was vicious. The plane was going up and down and jumping all over the place, and it was just crazy. And the woman was all scared and crying and squealing out and holding on to the seat. And the little boy was just playing with his little toy. And he was full of laughter and gaiety. And the grandmother got a little bit muffed. She got a little bit irritated, exacerbated, frustrated. Boy, how can you play at a time like this? How can you play when things are so bad? He looked over to his grandmother and said, Grandma, I think you forgot. Your son, my daddy, he's the pilot. See, when you know who's in the cockpit, when you know who's 
running the plane, when you know who's flying this thing in the storm, you can be calm even when the bumps are giving you discomfort. God is in charge. He's in the cockpit. Yeah, put on your seatbelt. Be responsible. But smile. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Give him praise while you pray for the ending of the virus and the storms that you face. But remember, he's in charge. May God give you a blessed 2022 as you serve him and as we serve him together. Love you. God bless you, Father. Cover your people. Wake us up to your purpose and bring attention to the world that it cannot leave you out and have order. We give you the glory for a new year as we cross over together. In Jesus' name, amen.